and Shearer. It's Shearer for Newcastle. The way he brought that down was fabulous. Cantona. Oh. Aguero. Only football can make you feel like this. Yes, the Euros are done and dusted, and the World Cup is on its way next year. So in the interim here on the Shooting Czars podcast, we are coming together for a very special occasion. After a life of football in both England and Australia, one of our own on the Shooting Czars podcast, Alexander Ian Grant, finds himself in a position very few in the professional game do. Last December, he and his young family made the bold decision to leave the safe COVID bubble of Perth for a life in what has proved to be a very foreign country, South Korea that is. A grueling football season has ensued throughout 2021 in which his side, the Pohang Steelers, have popped up as a surprise packet in the biggest club competition across the Asian continent, the AFC Champions League. On Tuesday morning Australian time, Pohang Steelers will play Saudi Arabian side Al-Halal and the winner will be, will be crowned champions of the competition for 2021. If Pohang win what will be the club's fourth Asian Champions League trophy, Alex, you will become the first West Australian to win the competition. And I have one question to start this very special podcast. How Five did we eight. get here? How did we get here? <laughs> oh, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> how did we get here, Alex? Tell us. I have no no idea, mate. To be honest with you, it's it's like it's been a whirlwind, doesn't it? Of just so many different events and emotions, and here we are. Oh, very vague question, though, Stu, to start us off. Yeah, what, <laughs> you... oh, it's philosophical. Oh, well, yeah, it was I, a philosophical I enjoy approach. It. It. it was a philosophical yeah. approach. Look, I jumped on a plane yesterday <laughs> from Seoul and. Here I am. Think deeper. How did we get here? Have you stopped to think that you're like, wow, you're about to win a pretty big trophy in the world of football that if you win this trophy, right, the winners of this competition go and play the winners of the European Champions League, the UEFA Champions League, and the Club World Cup next year, for those that don't know. So, you know, not the smallest thing in the world here, Alex. Have you have you stopped to think about it much? Potentially. Yeah, I mean, oh, man, it's surreal that we're here. I think no one... No one fancied us to be here when the competition began. I think domestically we've not been, you know, on top form and we've not achieved greatness in the league and whatnot. And I think if you look at it from that perspective, like I said, no one would have put us in the final of the Asian Champions League. But the way we've performed in this competition has just been amazing. And it's credit to us, credit to everyone, the players, the coaching staff and the club as a whole, the fans as well. Um, you know, for us being here, and it's just oh, what a game to play in. I'm so honest, I'm so excited. It's yeah. crazy, man. It is, it's just surreal. I bet it is. And, and you, uh, we've had discussions throughout your time over there, and you, you've just kept saying to me, well, There's something about this run that your team is on. Like, like can you maybe enlighten the listeners as to, like, what's the feeling? It's just like you just you keep getting over the line out, you know, at all costs, or it just happens. Yeah, you know, we will run through each games and you've had a couple of big moments in the run to the final, but the spirit in this competition seems like it's uh, different to that in the league. Am I right? It's just been there. There's just that togetherness in, within the group in this competition, I feel. And when we were doing the Euros pod, there I was sat in, in my hotel room in Thailand, in Bangkok. And who would have thought then that we'd be sat here now doing a special pod sitting in the final because I didn't because no. even group stage the results we, we got okay we only lost one game against Nagoya but because of the way that the um the competition this year is kind of set up and it was hard to qualify to the round of 16 um so we weren't guaranteed and we had to rely on other results actually to get through because we finished second in the group so even though like that was grueling over there in Thailand playing in 35 degree heat 80 percent humidity and um, a game every three days uh, to come through that. And then we went to Japan and won over there in a gritty 1-0 win. Um, and then to play the, the the quarters in the semi against Nagoya and, and Ulsan. And to come away um, with what happened was, yeah, like I said, the best feeling ever and thoroughly deserved by everyone. 
So what's the feeling in the camp at the minute? You know, the game's on, as I mentioned, Wednesday, Tuesday morning, I think, Wednesday morning. Well, anyway, it's next week. I think it's <laughs> Wednesday. The, Wednesday morning, yeah. sorry. But what's the feeling what, in the camp? 12, 12, 12 o'clock it is, Tuesday night. Yep, there you go. Wednesday morning. Wednesday and morning. Feeling's good. I mean, we, we've got here, what, four, five, five days, six days early than the game. And so it gives us plenty of time to prepare. The hotel we're staying in is nice um, in Riyadh. So it's always nice to be in a comfortable environment um, leading into a game such as this. And um, we had training last night. I think the, the body clock's a bit off at the moment. Um, we had training late on. I think it was, I got back. We had dinner at like nine o'clock. So it was, it was like two or three a.m. back in Korea. So, yeah, I woke up during the night, managed to, to get back down after an hour. A few of the boys I spoke to breakfast had a similar um similar problem waking up within the night and then uh yeah everyone's good everyone's buzzing around and I think having that time kind of just to soak it all in and you can kind of relax a little more I think you know when you get to a game sometimes the day before or whatever it can be a bit put a bit more nerve-wracking energy on on the situation and um because it's so close but I think coming earlier and having that time to adjust and um, get used to your surroundings will benefit us. Is it a better, nicer room and situation than the prison of Thailand, as I remember you mentioning? Yeah, mate. Oh, yeah. that was a... Uh, I think, yeah, the, the restrictions we had there were heavily enforced. And, yeah. and So we weren't allowed to leave the room where we was here. We've got a bit of freedom. We can venture around the hotel. We still can't yeah. leave. Um, and I don't think there's anything much to do here. Uh, yeah. Hotel. So it's kind of yeah, everyone's just <clears throat> enjoying the the company of the themselves and um, just hanging out in the room. Um, PlayStation's come along with me, so that'll that'll get smashed. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. And how's the um? Do you think there's the pressure seems? I mean, a bit more relaxed, given that the um, Al Halal would be the hot favourites for it. Do you oh. feel like they've they've got it all to lose, and like it's yeah. it's more exciting than anything for you guys? Without a doubt, I mean, yeah. players on millions and millions of dollars a year, signed yeah. for millions of dollars. You know, they have an expectation, yeah. win. Um, and we're here to spoil the party in front of yeah. six, 68,000 Saudis who will all be Far dressed out. in blue. So. I mean, what an occasion to go and upset it all, and there's no, there'd be no better feeling. So I'm just thinking, you're saying I'm just trying to have a quick look through Al Halal's squad, mate. We, Giovinco, <laughs> is he got, still there? No, he's not. He's not. I'm looking oh. at the list now. So uh, the Saudi Arabian leagues and the the Gulf leagues, I suppose, are, are hot spots for European players. For those that maybe don't know, um, it's money. still still good money. Um, they maybe leave Europe and then head to these hotspots and get paid well and other star players. So there are some, or well, one name in particular, Bafatimbi Gomez, French player. Oh, yeah. Was it Swansea for a bit? Played at Swansea in the Premier League, yeah. uh, striker. So, Alex, you're going to have your hands full with a former Premier League player. I know you've played against them before um, in the A-League and whatnot, but... Uh, Baffin Timmy Gomez may be a name that those who have followed football closely will know. Um, have you done any like have you done any preparation into watching clips? Like has, has it gone into that? Or have you what what's the prep around him been like? Um, not really. I mean, we've we've had a few clips sent through and whatnot, and we just I've just come from the video meeting now, um, where we kind of analyzed them and um worked on a few things and and talked about certain areas where we can exploit them and where we have to, uh, you know, stay focused and, and work on our game as well. Um, so yeah, look, I'm gonna have my hands full. He's he's a top player. He's played in the Premier League, like you said. He's, you know, he scored a lot of goals in that league um, in Saudi, and he, he's, you know, they won the Champions League two years ago, 2019, I think it was. So mm. they know um, how to step up in 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 this kind of game. They, they've done it before, so. Yeah, it's gonna be. I'm gonna have my hands full, like you said. But uh, that's what. That's why I play this game, mate. That's that's why I do this. Why it's that's why it's the best job in the world, in my opinion. That's why I love it so much. <laughs> for, 
just to play in occasions like this. And I may never get the opportunity to do it again. So I might as well go out swinging and, and give it everything I've got. I think that's the best way of looking at it because it's hard to get to a final. Um, not many players can say they've played in one um, and, and one as big as this. Mm. And Absolutely. Yeah. And obviously from an Australian perspective, just quick, just quickly before we move off, uh, Gomez, for those that are listening, he's played for St. Etienne, Lyon, both in the French League One, Luke, uh, Swansea City, Marseille, Galatasaray, and now Al Halal. He's a 12-time capped French international between 2008 and 2013. So I'm sure he was playing with uh, some of the best French players around that you could probably think of from that time. But um, he's got a got a very iconic celebration, which we definitely won't see in the week coming. Um, <laughs> Or he does that crawl like a lion after. Yes. I saw that at Swansea. Yeah, but... yes. <laughs> good shout. Good shout. Just go straight to him and do the lion, mate. Great yeah. shout. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's, for those that are maybe going to watch the game, number 18 for Al Halal Baffer, Timmy Gomez, will be coming up against Granty, number two for Pohang. But Alex, so last season, a former teammate of yours at the Glory, Jason Davidson, won the competition with Lil Sun Hyundai. Um, I mean, if you spoke to Jason Davidson, you know, any or any other Aussie players that have maybe been in and around where you are in the lead up to this or, or, or are you keeping it all to yourself sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, well, the, um, on number six, uh, Jin Ho, he was the captain who lifted the trophy for Ulsan last season. So he... Um, there you go. Yeah, he's, he's kind of... He, he talks good English as well. So it's, if I need any tips or, you know, need to ask him any questions about it, the occasion then uh, I'll just go to him but um, yeah in, in that respect no I've not really spoke to him I saw and I got tagged on Twitter the other day um, in an article uh, is it what's Keep Up is it the new yeah it's a new, the new Australian yeah. Football League's uh, app yes yeah so they, they tagged me in, a, in an article the other day which um, was interviewing Ante Kovic who obviously played in the final against Al Hilal Back in 2014 with the Wanderers, and I played a played a season at the Glory with with Cov. So, um, you know, he he, um, he spoke highly of the um, the game itself, and and playing here in Riyadh and um, in front of Al Al Hilal fans, and and what it's going to be like, uh, the atmosphere, and very hostile um, it sounds. So. Yeah, he had, he had a lot of good things to say, um, not only about the game, but myself as well. So it was nice nice to read that the other day with, a, with my coffee and breakfast. So, yeah. How's the media attention been? I know a good friend of mine, Ben Smith, had a chat with you as well. Yeah, I mean, we all come out of the woodwork, don't we, when, uh, <laughs> when, the, big, when, the, when the big game's up in town? Hey? Yeah, hey, mate. Hey, he slid, oh, the, he slid into the he slid into the DMs this week. It was good. It was good. It was good from him, mate. There's there's, there's I've said I've said this before. I've said this before. When the world, when there's something big going on in the world game, there's no no other sport in Australia uh, <laughs> matters anymore. If there's an Australian storyline, I'm telling you, like yeah. football, it yeah. has the most coverage in Australia, despite yeah. it not being for whatever reason the favorite sport. But yes, you you had a bit of media attention. You had an article in the West with. Uh, ben Smith, a friend of all of ours. So, um, yeah, and you, uh, you've got – we're recording this at the time before you're going to go on the Asian Game podcast with Paul Williams, which is a Ooh. prominent football podcast. Um, Aussie Paul Williams, um, based, not sure where he's based actually. But, yeah, tell us, about, tell us about the media attention at large. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we've um, – yeah, a few people. Michael Church from um, AFC – did an interview with him as well and John Davidson back who's based in the UK. Um yeah, a few few good interviews I've done now over the last week or so. And you can just tell um how big of an occasion it is by, like I said, the, the media attention it's getting and even the shooting czars, you know, moaning me up. But, <laughs> he actually yeah. Alex is we didn't phone you up. He actually but you messaged us saying we should do a pod. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you know, I think that's what it was. I think because it was like a lot of people um, you know, asking me for interviews, like mm. this is me and my, my natural. Yep. This natural. is the only interview you would prefer to give, but you have obligations as we understand. There you go. Yep. Took it off the tip of my tongue, Stu. So yeah, I can, I can act more, um, you know, a little more relaxed in this environment. As long as you, 
in every interview you give our podcast a shout out and that's always been the rule then you know we'll be fine so um drop uh, the not, names as well yeah yeah not a problem couldn't, couldn't have done it without them i'd be nothing without these two you know you know just the usual stuff it comes from the heart obviously naturally but yeah I just did a podcast just before and it's yeah miles better than this one so if anyone's listening <laughs> the soccer podcast <laughs> <laughs> nah we're all friends um all right alex tell us a bit about because okay, so you're in saudi arabia like i was you know in the excitement of you making it to the final especially after scoring that header which for those that are watching on youtube you can see in my background alex's celebration from when he somehow Scored the most ridiculous of headers to win Pohang the game. But, um, Look, yeah, he looked pretty happy there. <laughs> um, what's Saudi Arabia like? I know you've probably only been there a day or whatever, but like, what, what's, the, what's the vibe like? Like, or do you need more time to figure that out? I'm just looking out the window now. Um, not a lot, bit of sand, um, a few buildings. <laughs> Sun's out. Any Newcastle um, United shirts? No, I'm not seeing any more. Brother. <laughs> Give it time, Stuart. Give it time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till we're winning. Yeah, get a trophy and then you'll see him everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's that's been the, the disappointing thing, I guess, from that side of it is the fact that the whole competition, I've been in four different countries, including Korea, and um, really not, not seeing much other than yeah. the inside of the hotel room and the stadium. So um, it's been a bit disappointing because I know, like, obviously with the job that I've got, you, you do get to travel so much. And, and even but even back in Australia, playing in the A-League, you, you travel to all the major cities and Newcastle and Wellington and whatnot. And even then you wouldn't see much um, unless you went on a night out after the game, which later on became less frequent. So, mm. yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's okay. Like I said, the hotel's nice, so that's kind of all I can comment on at the moment. Uh, the weather's nice. Um, it's not too hot. Obviously, when you think of Saudi in the Middle East, you think scorching deserts and, you know, 40-plus degrees. But I think we've come at a good time of year, and it's mid-20s last night. It was a tad chilly, a nice breeze coming through, no humidity, yeah. so perfect conditions. For the World Cup next year as well, for that region. So that's why the World Cup is in November of next year not in the usual june july slot um all right i guess we better talk about let's talk about the tournament all right so as i mentioned you scored the header in the semi-final which was an equalizing header i got it wrong and then you won on pens um but let's maybe where should we start so just give us maybe a bit of a summation of the group stages obviously we touched on it a bit earlier on you maybe didn't think that you're going to get out of the group stages or it's always just been a battle and um you made it out and then you got into the round of 16 and you played Sherezo Osaka. I've butchered that pronunciation, but um, that was a 1-0 win. It was beautiful, Stu. Beautiful. It was a 1-0 win. Maybe if you can cast your mind back to that game and um, how that went and who you've maybe seen that you know from past you know, playing against them or anyone like that. How, what was that game like, at least to start with? Okay, we'll start with the Cerezo one. Yeah, yep. um, I didn't play Stu. If you did your research properly, you don't. <laughs> I was on the bench. That's right. <laughs> you just wanted to bring it up. He's just trying to humble you, mate. Yeah. Big All Champions right. League, big time Charlie's yeah. like, oh, well, you, would you play? Yeah. You better play no. in the final, man. This is, you know, you better... Yeah, come on. No, don't make this... us look bad. <laughs> oh, God. No, um, I, my groins were really sore leading up into the game, and I'd missed the game in the league against Daegu previously. and um, I still went to Japan thinking that I was going to play, but I just wasn't right. And the coach made a decision the day before the game and just said, I'm not going to play you. And look, the way I look at it, maybe if I played, we would have lost. So um, everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? And here we are. And then you lace up your boots in the quarterfinal against Nagoya. Yeah. Yeah, played that one. That was um, that was in Jonju at John Book's um, home ground. The the quarters and the semis were both played at that venue, so we stayed there for five days. And um, I was on the phone to Lauren, or said to Lauren before on that game that oh look, they battered us three 0 in the group stage. Um, you know, if they win, I'll be back home sooner. Um, but if we win, 
I'll be away for another three or four days. So all right, just be that. So um, yeah, that that was the that was the situation there against Nagoya. I mean, we, I think we hung in there, and that's going to be the important thing um, in the game next week. Goals in the fifty third minute, so you, you you got ahead just after half time, and then seventieth minute you snuck the second one in, and then ninety plus five. So, yeah, yeah, I, th- I think in in all the three knockout games, starting in Japan, we hung in there and we defended well. Was hard to beat, which we can be um, at times, and we've shown throughout the course of the season that we can be. Um, it's just the consistency's not been there in the league, whereas in this competition it has, like I said earlier. And um, I think maybe Nagoya, especially Ulsan as well, thought they'd probably walk all over us. And by allowing us to get into the game and with us staying in it for that long, we just built momentum. And even though Ulsan took the lead in the in the semi final, you you still sensed, especially when they went down to ten men in that game, that we we get something out of it. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be key next week is the fact that we we actually we don't concede early, we we stay compact and we, and we stay in the hunt. And what? So you, I'm, I'm just trying to gauge in terms of maybe what. So there's been no tactical analysis yet, kind of on Al Halal and what their strengths are, or, or is that to come in the coming days? Oh yeah, we just done it now. That's what I just said. Yeah, we've been there for the last hour. Last okay. Well, can you keep? What are you expecting then? What's the, what's the team expecting? Go into a bit more detail. Can't tell you. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> nah, oh, look, they've got they've got good players. They've got you know inter, um, Saudi internationals like you've already touched on. They've got Gomez. They've got Guerrero who played at West Brom last season and bagged how many goals in the in the Premier League for West Brom? Yeah. Saturday, mm-hmm. Like thirty million was it or something like that? So. Um, we know they've got strong players. They, they they like putting a lot of balls in the box. Um, like getting the ball out wide. They've got a couple of playmakers um, who we need to keep our eye on. Um, so I think with the atmosphere and the crowd probably deafening a lot of the noise on the pitch, it's going to be um, you know vitally important for us to to be more focused and actually put the onus on on oneself that, you know, I've got to stay switched on because you're not going to be able to hear people on the sideline shouting instructions. So it's kind of on on, on us now to to organise and, and do it ourselves. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be very fascinating. And then we hit the semi-finals. So you've beaten Nagoya 3-0 in the quarters, which may on paper look like you breeze through, but it definitely wasn't like that. And then you get to Ulsan in the semi-finals and... That was an arm wrestle for a lot of the game, obviously. They, they, they took the lead, snuck an early goal. Could have probably gone either way from memory early in the game. And then they took the lead. But it was, as you mentioned, Bo Hang, the steel yard. They hang, hung in there. And then you got to talk us through the, the greatest goal you've ever scored and one of the, the best moments of your career, definitely. Um, yeah, then what was it, the 89th minute or something? You're on the ropes as a team. There's a sort of, what was it, 30 sort of yards, right-hand side, ball gets crossed in from a free kick. And then you've just pulled this looping header out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then gone ballistic. But yeah, talk us through the goal and then talk us through that game. What do you remember? How do you remember the goal? Um. I'd missed, so I think probably about the 76 minutes. So they, they went down to 10 men. I can't remember what minute it was. It was probably halfway through the second half. They lost their captain who was actually sent off against us in the league the um, the month, uh, month prior. So he, he's not had a good run against us this season with two red cards. But Rattled, he, mate. Uh, yeah, he, he did us a favour because we definitely started um, – creating a lot more chances after after that occurrence. And then um, I remember it was probably about the 77th minute, Mario um, Kovacic, the, the guy who floated in the throw free kick, he uh, he dinked. I, I don't know why, I think we must have had a set piece, but I've, I was up up the pitch and he, he, he cut one back and chipped it. And sometimes when you've got too much time to think about a header, it can go horribly wrong. And 
I remember I had one for glory a couple of years, like last season or a couple of years ago against Melbourne City. And, and when the ball's more lofty than you know you're going to head it, it can actually be harder to stick it in the back of the net because you've, you've got so much time to, to fuck it up, basically. Mm. Um, and that's what I did. And, and it hit me on top of my head. And I knew straight away that I'd not caught it well. And it, it just, I think it hit the, um, the netting on, on the top of the, the goal. And I was like thinking to myself, that was my chance. That, that was it. That was my name up in lights. That was, you know, the, the, the sign, the fee that they paid for me, that was paid back in that one moment. And I've absolutely buzzed it up <laughs> thinking that it's not often, especially as a centre-back, you get an opportunity as clear as that. And I should have took it and I didn't. But then we fast forward 10 minutes and we've got a free kick. And I, I don't remember how we got the free kick. Um, and I was just thinking, I was actually thinking leading up to the free, to Mario putting the ball in that where, because they had a, quite a high line, if you if you watch the goal back, where Olsan, Olsan's defence was positioned and in the same area as to where I'd want my back, back line really defending that kind of free kick. Because I remember when Popo always used to say to us, obviously, and Foxy at Glory, that um, especially for the, I think it was the, in swinger, um, it's it's a lot harder to direct the header from further out, especially into the goal. I mean, you you've got to pull something like you said, literally out your ass to to score, and and thankfully I did. I mean, honest, it was just when I seen it coming, I was like, well, it's coming to me. And then you think, what am I going to do? Because of where I was, my first thought was, do I just put it back into an area, or do I go for goal? And I think I, I definitely, I was putting it towards that, that back post. Um, and I was kind of hoping that someone else would get on the end of it. But obviously when I've headed it and I've seen the line on it and because the ball had spin, it kind of, it, as soon as it hit my head, it started spinning obviously the opposite direction and the ball was curling and I could see it and I could see it. And there's a, someone, a fan tagged me on Instagram and on my tag photos and there's a there's an angle from behind the goal and you can just see it, you just see it and I'm kind of looking at it come down and I knew as it was halfway in the air, I was thinking to myself, this has got a chance. This could go in because of the angle as well and the keeper was scrambling across and it actually helped me that it hit the post because I think if it had gone straight in, the keeper probably would have would have palmed it out but the fact that it hits the post, the keeper was thinking, ah, it's going to bounce back out of the goal He's kind of left it because he probably yeah. thinks that I might hit the post as well, but it's hit the inside of the post, I think, because of the spin and it's gone into the goal. And I was like, oh, shit, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. Off we go. <laughs> and then look, look at my screen. There he is. <laughs> Love the celebration. So good. And I you enjoy I, there. I didn't know what to do. It's a shame, like in a in a sense, that it wasn't the winner because I mean it could have just saved me another fifteen minutes and penalty shootout. But I'll definitely take it. Mm. Um, oh. yeah. And then it, it went to pens. Game, yeah, it went to pens. I got dragged after the first half of extra time. I think the coach thought I was tiring a little. So, how was it watching yeah. a penalty shootout? Like, I feel like it's one of those things that you go through and maybe in a junior competition or whatever mm. like that. But to go. At that so level, much on to the go through a penalty well. shootout just must have been just mental. I think I said this in an interview last week. Um, I wasn't nervous and mm. I was just kind of calm and relaxed. And I think as kind of bad as it sounds, I felt in a way that like I'd done my job. Now do yours now, this. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was like, I've done my bit. Now yeah. you've got to do your bit, lad. I'm off, yeah. so you've got to kind of do <laughs> It sounds a little selfish, but that's kind of... I think of, it's realistic. I think, I think that's what you want to hear. Is it's not this, oh, you know, it was so tense, but we all believe each other because that's rubbish. It's Hearing that is, mm. like, more insightful, in my opinion, being like, yeah. look, I was pretty relaxed. I'd scored a goal, and I know they just had to do their job now because we'd done ours on the park for the 120 minutes. Mm. And that's, I, think, I think that's why I was relaxed because I was confident as well in the fact that they would score, and then kind of that pressure was kind of off me in a way. Yeah. You know, was there a part of you that was like, these fuckers better not ruin my equalizer? <laughs> I've 100% thought well. that before in games. When you get a goal, I'm just going to be the fucking winner. I'm fuming. <laughs> no, I really didn't think that. But I, I wish I had not because that would, that would have been good to have brought up right Don't now. Don't ruin my moment. 
Don't yeah. you? This is this is about me. Yeah. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Some of the penalties, like we had a, a guy who came on, I think, extra time, Sung Ju, who was probably featured twice all season, and he stepped yeah. up. And Love we practiced his pens um, before every knockout game, so we did it before mm. uh, the Saka game, and and the same before also, uh, sorry, before Nagoya. So we we obviously watch yeah. people, our teammates, take penalties and. And um, yeah, I always say to Sung Ju, like uh, he always steps up and he just he's the calmest player on the ball and he just slots it and I, he always turns around and I always go, hey Sung Ju and just go like that because he's just like he's got the cigar out when he takes a pen. He's just it seems like there's, there's no there's no pressure on him whatsoever. Um, <laughs> he's got the swagger for it. He does. He's just one of those players that's just got that kind of prowess and calmness and yeah, it's it's nice. I wish I had it. So, so, so talk, how, oh, go yeah. on, Brassy, you go. From like a, a training point of view, I don't know, don't, I don't want you guys to give away any tactics or anything like that, but how long does penalty shootout practice go for? Because I know for like club level or whatever, you just kind of like, oh, we just do a knockout and whoever misses is out type of thing. But how, how much of it do you have to do? For, before the Ulsan and the Goya game, we did um, at the end of the training the day before, everyone took two penalties. Okay. Is that it? That was enough. <laughs> that was yeah. it. You don't want to overthink it, I guess, do you? That was it. Everyone's took two penalties, so the day after you, you know, really, more or less, where you're going to stick it. Um, obviously, if you scored, you just probably go the same way. And yeah, missed, uh, and where? Missed, I don't know what you're going to do. And, <laughs> and where are you? Where are you going to stick it if you have to take a penalty in the penalty shootout? Um. Why are you asking me these questions? <laughs> you're a spy now that they've been taken over. Saudi Arabia's got some funds in uh, Newcastle. He's like, yeah, just want to help him out. You know? Okay, well, okay, well, maybe, maybe don't tell me what you're going to do, but um, obviously don't tell me what you're going to do. Yeah, the Fenenka. But what's, <laughs> what? how have you That's been taught? That's definitely your style. How have you been taught to take penalties in a penalty shootout throughout your career? What's the, the been the messaging from the coaches or what do you think when you get up there, like if, you ever, if you've ever had to? Hit a target. Yeah, that's what you got to do, isn't it? Yep. If they save it, well done. Uh, I, like, I don't know. I think some managers have said that uh, it's all luck and all this and that. And other managers have said, kind of, you create your own luck. And, you know, for me, it's as long as you hit the target it, and the keeper pulls off a good save, then I can't, you can't complain. You can't mm. be like, it was like you said in the Euros, how disgusting it was, all the abuse the England players got for yeah. missing penalties. And, and like, you know, if you force the keeper into a save, then you've done as best as you can. Mm. You just put your hands up and say, well, that today wasn't my day. You know? Yeah. For me. yeah. Um, even some of the best in the world have, have missed penalty shootouts and, and lost in, in, that, in that way. So Yeah. Bit of a flip of a coin, isn't it? It kind of doesn't... There's no uh, definitive way to say how to, how to win them other than just make sure you put the ball uh, on target, as you mentioned. But... Let's talk about like the level of playing at the Asian Champions League because you played at you played in England in lower leagues there, and then you, you came back to the A League and you established you established yourself strongly in the A League, and now you've moved over to Korea and you're playing in the K League and the Asian Champions League. Is the Asian Champions League obviously on paper many would you'd assume it's better than all the other leagues you played in? But can you maybe just talk about the level of the Asian Champions League games? Have you noticed a tangible difference? to all the other leagues you've played in? And if you have, what is that? I think um, the group stage, not as much because obviously you play weaker and stronger teams. So we played a Thai team in Ratchaburi and no disrespect to them. They weren't a bad team. We, we drew nil-nil and I think we beat them 2 nil, was it? Or something like that in the, in the group. And they were no mugs, don't get me wrong, but they, they weren't the greatest team I've ever played, you know? And then we played um, Johor, who... Shane Lowry now plays for another fellow Aussie and ex teammate of mine, and and they weren't a bad team either. But you know we we were a lot stronger than them, a lot more organised, and you know we beat them on two separate occasions as well. So um, they've been on a tear this season as well. They went they're like fourteen or something in a row, won the league with absolute ease. So good yeah. win. Yeah, it's kind of it gives you a kind of look into that aspect as to yeah, okay. where the leagues are kind of at. Yeah. In terms throughout Asia um, and it's kind of disappointing in that respect that 
we don't play anyone from from the western side of the competition until you get to the final so it's yeah is that divide um between east and west um so obviously in the in the knockout stages osaka um Cerezo, they they've not had the best season domestically and obviously adam taggart plays for them now so i had a good um good chat with adam after the game and um had a couple of vinos with him room and um, which was nice it's always good to have a, a catch with an old friend and someone, a familiar face, which has been hard to come by for the last nine, 10, 11 months. So um, it, w- it was kind of really nice to, to, to chat to Adam because obviously we, we go back a long way. And um, Osaka surprised me a little, I thought, because obviously the, the J Leagues, you would class as one of the best leagues, yeah, if yeah. not the best. Yeah, it's, I think it's like you'd think whenever you think like best in Asia, it's like Japan. Like you think the J League's the yeah. best, so yeah. What was it like? Yeah. And of course, they've there's definitely stronger teams in that league, and, and probably will give us a run for the money in in this competition. But um, yeah, Osaka were weren't as strong as what I thought they would be. Um, they kind of after ten minutes, you kind of knew that we were gonna win. They just they they didn't seem like they wanted it as much as us, and I think they were looking for perfection more than anything, and looking for that perfect yeah. goal and. And trying to slip players in that kind of weren't um, really onto it, and I think that drive that our players had and the the aggression that we showed in that game came out, got us out on top. So um, yeah, I mean, playing against Nagoya in the group stage and then playing um, in the in the knockout, another Aussie, Mitch Langerak, who I'd not met prior to uh, the group stage in Thailand, but. Formerly of Borussia to, Dortmund as well. Yeah, it was good to have a chat to to Mitch. He's a, he was a really nice guy um, and came over to me actually in Thailand straight away to have a chat to him. So, you know, it's always nice to, to catch up with players and fellow Aussies and whatnot, players who you can kind of affiliate yourself with. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, they, they, they're a good team, um, nice on the ball, tidy, some good players. But um, on the day, again, it was as though... He didn't really want it and they probably mm. didn't show enough respect. Yeah. Um, in the group stage, it's kind of hard to read into the group because the conditions were poor in mm. terms of the, the weather. Bit of a hub um, as well, right? Yeah, having it back up every three days. Obviously, the stronger teams are going to come out and I think it definitely hardened us up uh, moving on throughout the tournament. So um, it's one we'll look back at now and say uh, it was all worth it. Mm. Or a week anyway. Yeah, very much so. So it's the club have won it three times, Pohang, right? Three time winners, and your coach, yeah. if, your coach, if I'm not mistaken, was the first captain to lift the trophy for the club. Is that right, or have I got that wrong? In its new format. In its new format, which was in 2009. So the 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 one time winners of the new format of the competition, but three times overall, technically. Um, they all count. They all count. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I'm just I'm I'm curious as to maybe like have you know what's the club you know have you got people around the club? Obviously, you don't speak Korean, and I'm aware of that. But it's like I don't know. Is there like talkers? Maybe I'm just trying to think of maybe other clubs that have consecutively won trophies, or you know, is it what's the chatter around the club about this tournament, or do people ever talk, stop and tell you stories or anything like that, or is the coach trying to? Be like, oh, back in my day or anything like that or not really? No, not really. I mean, I think these, I guess there is that aspect around the club that you, you sense and you get that feel that... Is there, I, could is... imagine, I could imagine, Bryce, it's the same at Liverpool and the mm. players there, that when they qualify for the Champions League, because of the historic success that they've had in that competition, yeah. it's almost expected of them to do well in it, you know? Yeah, and, and, and it can just... go one of two ways, can't it? Like a lot of teams could buckle, but it... If you've got that atmosphere and stuff behind you, it can just drive you the whole way and probably outperform where your standards are. Yeah, and that, and that team in, in 2005, I would say, like, it was a very good team, don't get me wrong, but... But it was probably compared to, mate, you look From at AC the- Milan's team, it was like World Eleven, and you got Jimmy Traore winning the Champions League. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, and I think, that, I think that's kind of... That kind of... Hey, up. hey, class. Wow. It filtered down for sure, and I've definitely felt that here as well. Like you've got the bolters in the clubhouse and around the ground, yeah. and um, 
of the the history of the club and, and past teams lifting the Champions League. Um, so I, I think that definitely plays into it without a doubt. Mm. But Al Halal have, have won three outright as well. So mm. I'm, uh, this this will obviously whoever wins it will be the outright um, you know leaders in in terms of how many. Asian Champions League. The oh, is that right? So you two wow. are like equal at the moment for most one in the tournament. Oh, yeah, three. wow. That's Jeez. An extra, isn't it? Like, so many permutations. Far out. That's crazy. I didn't realise. Yeah, so where can we watch cool. the game? Channel 10, mate. Channel 10? Yes. Oh, they're, so, they're, oh no, they're. Yeah, so Channel 10 have in Australia, 10 play. Uh, have the broadcast rights, so you'll need to log on to the Have you got a login? App. Have you got a login, Stu? <laughs> I do have a login, but uh, it's my personal login. So, uh, but no, it's, it's on free to air, so it's on 10 play, so you'll be able to All right, sick. Cool. catch the game there for anyone that's interested in um, watching Alex get his head in. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but so, anyway, just going back, just quickly, going back to like the history of the club winning the, the, the tournament a few times, like, is there when you walk into the club rooms, right, in the clubhouse, the training base, like, is there the trophies in a cabinet, those kinds of things? Like, is that all, it's all on show, maybe the history of the clubs and the trophies they've won, is that, is that a thing there? Yeah, yeah. When I first signed um, at the club, um, where Bryce, Bryce's background there, you can't, I think my head's cut off there, but that is me. Like, are there some Carhartt <laughs> pants there? Uh, no, they're um, Arne Claw, whatever it is, some English brand that I've kind of, Found on the internet. Um, a bit tight there, but that's all right. Pretty good. Yeah, I, I should have gone the large, <laughs> medium. Should, should reveal it. I think I'm dressed to the right. left as well. Um, but yeah, there's the trophy cabinet. Um, the office is there, and then there's also the one at the clubhouse as well. So yeah, it's all on show. As to the success of the club. And just quickly, you know, because you know, okay, this isn't the type of interview for you. Well, we're not interviewing. We are, but, you know, we're having a discussion here. But, you know, it's like when you hear players that are like ahead of big games and they're like just towing the party line, playing the straight bat, you know, not thinking about winning or, you know, all those just like classic kinds of things. Are you just like, are you just like, be honest, are you just sitting there just going like, oh, my God, what am I going to do when I win? Like something like that or no? <laughs> you mean what am I going to do when I win? Well, oh. I can't drink. Because in Saudi, it's dry. It's, course, it's a dry yeah, country. Geez. So, okay, well, what are the celebrations going to be? Is there any word about that, or are you going to have to do it back in Korea? Okay, well, maybe, but that's when you don't get too far ahead, right? Just put the soju on ice, and it'll be ready for you when you get back to Pohang. Nice <laughs> <laughs> price. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, mate. I, I guess, yeah. You don't think yeah, it's, yeah. it's a thing? So maybe, maybe the cliche answer is truth, because you probably can't get too far ahead, I guess, but. You know, you just you don't want to hear that fucking answer all the time. No, I'm I'm interested in this. There's like that mentality going into it. You do hear all those cliches, but if it is in your head, like I'm just buzzing for this, is going to be sick. Mm. What an experience! Or is it? Do you start thinking about what if and what not and all those type of things? What's in your noggin? I obviously, I've I've thought about how good it will be. Yeah. To to win. That's human. Yeah. Yeah, like obviously everyone thinks yeah. that. You're lying if you don't like. Oh, if I win, I'll be crowned Asian champion. Like, yeah, you know, and all, have the, all these accolades and whatnot. Shooting stars name. on the world stage. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so, so that's the yeah. I've definitely thought about that, but I mean, the last few days has kind of just been more. I just want to enjoy it a bit as well. Like, I feel like we we aren't favourites. We are going in as underdogs. Like. Not many times. Like, I played in one final. I was injured for another. Mm. Yeah. I played 20 minutes of the 2015 FFA Cup final, which we yeah. lost to Melbourne yeah. Victory. And prior, um, so prior to this, that, that and the, obviously the A-League Grand Final, which I was injured in, the only two finals that I've been in squads that, have quali- that we've qualified for. So who knows when I'll play in another one and if I'll ever play in another one. So, mm. I mean, I'm just... Like, yeah, I can't wait just to get to the stadium and just to, like, be on the pitch and be like, well, oh, this is it. And even this yeah. could be, the, this could be the, 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 the very top I get, you know? Yeah, I yeah. might not be better than this. Yeah, and so you I'm haven't been to the stadium yet? Yeah, I just want to lap it up and we'll train yeah, the day the before. Most of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll train the day before at the stadium so that kind of will get the... 
I'll get the buzz then for sure when I see the stadium and what the pitch is like and you know you get familiar with the changing rooms and everything. So um is sixty and sixty eight thousand sold out, I assume. Yeah. Is that the biggest crowd you've That's insane. played will will be the biggest crowd you've played in front of? Yeah, I think yeah, the, the Chelsea game, the Optus was fifty six and then yeah, this will probably top this will top that. So yeah, sixty eight is is a nice number. That's amazing. You got to send plenty of pics and vids through, mate. I want to see as much as possible. I mean, even the just the change rooms, I'm just ex- mm. interested to see like how high level they are. Yeah. Like my, fo- I was trying to get a new phone in at the airport, and bloody, I don't know if you can see my phone is just like cracked and it's, <laughs> oh, it's worse. And Gomez has probably got like four, and like <laughs> someone answers the phone for him. Yeah. So I'll try my best. Well, mate, get some photos and pics or whatever, and then we'll maybe for the listeners, we'll get them up on the shooting czar's story. Exclusive. No, I'm sure you want to put them up yourself. You put up a photo of the bus on your story the other day when you saw oh, yeah. got off. Um, yeah. Love the pageantry of a final. It just looks so good. Even just yeah. seeing that on a bus when you're walking out, you just like, oh, is that for me? Oh, it's just so good. Is this like a moment where you feel like you made it in the game? Does that make sense? I know that's like another deep question or have you like, no, have you had no, that feeling before? No, no. Um, I think obviously you, you, you play, you play football because you love it. Um, but then there's obviously other draw cards as well that, that makes it such, such a good job. There's obviously the, the financial aspects and, I've always said, and, and my dad always said that when I was younger, that if you can earn any living off football, even whether it's a hundred dollars or a, you know, a hundred thousand mm. a week or whatever, it it makes no difference as long as you enjoy it. Mm. Um, I guess you get, um, and I always live by that, and and whatever you earn out of it, um, will always be a bonus. And and you, like I said, first and foremost, you do do it because you love it. But I think as you, as you get older, um. And you know, fans fans kind of look at it as I don't know. It's kind of a, a negative issue with fans in terms of the money that footballers are paid and everything. But for me, like I like every other person on the planet has to make a living and has to provide for my family and put food on the table. So you, you know, you, you're doing it because of that incentive. But then also, there's the flip it. You want to play to the highest level. Um, and then they both come hand in hand um, with one another. And um, for me, I, d- I don't, I don't know. I mean, when I was young, I used to think I want to play in the Premier League. And now that goal is probably, you know, out of reach. But then I look at like my other goals and like how I'm in Asia now. Like I guess you just got to focus on and zone in on where you are in in your career, how long you've kind of got left or hope to have left, mm-hmm. and then the small goals as to where you can get to now before you can get to that long-term goal. So perspective that. Yeah. And I, and I just think that, that right now, like I'm in this moment and then whatever comes of that will be, you know, and like my long-term goals, I would love to put on the green and gold and play for the Socceroos and play in a world cup. And, you know, that would be for me at this moment in time, the pinnacle, that would be mm. the, the, the very best, you know, I'd love to do that. Mm. Just um, even like you're in an Asian Arnie. Champions League final, it's just wild, man. No, it's unbelievable. I would, I would. And I think if you'd ask if if you asked any player if they if they don't want to say that, then then that's up to them. But I will happily yeah. say that I'd do that. And I think that. And you're um, closer now. Definitely. Well, that's it. I feel like I feel you're getting like way I'm, closer. Yeah, part part of my move to to Korea was to probably help that and help yeah. my position in breaking out of um, an environment that probably isn't looked looked at in terms of national selection. So that's why I'm kind of made the jump and I've wanted to do so for a couple of years now. So I'm kind of just working towards that. And look, it might never happen. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And then I can turn around and say, well, I played in an Asian Champions League final or I won the Asian Champions League or, you know. So we'll, we'll just take it day by day, month by month for now and then and then see where we end up. But yeah, I think every footballer wants to get to the top and, and even domestic, even in the league as well, like, Pohang probably won't be my my final destination. I'll have to go elsewhere as well. So, um, yeah. All righty, Granty. How long have you got? You you got to jump off pretty soon. How many minutes are we at? Uh, 
maybe like five or ten. Righto. Bryce is struggling for time as well. So just just before we finish, I put a little call out an hour before we did this. Yeah. And if I didn't have a brother, we wouldn't have any questions. Put it that way. <laughs> there you go. Bless Dave. And Lester Lee. Now, I'm going to start with a bit of comedy from Lester oh, Lee. Yes. This is a bit off topic, and I was surprised that Lester put in a, in a question, but he put in a question, so I have to I have to ask he you. He messaged me this week, actually, so I think it must have been top of mind. So the listeners, Lester Lee. Who is he? Lester Lee is a, is a, is a great friend of uh, ours. We all know. Uh, he went to school with Alex and I and Bryce. Did you play soccer Played with him? football with him, yeah. yeah. There you go. So, him Lester and his, Lee. his lesser talented twin, either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> Granty, who do you think is the best soccer player? Lester, Ivan, or <laughs> Dewey? Ivan's Actually, his twin brother. Yeah, but Bryce... I th- I'll be honest with you, and like, sorry, Stu, and sorry, Lester, but I thought Ivan was decent. <laughs> no? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I remember playing with him. Yeah, I thought Ivan was the better one out of out of you all. No, or have I got that horribly wrong? I just had a feeling maybe it was Ivan that was the better one. Well, but anyway, I, feel like I guess we need need to get him in a game environment again, don't we? Yeah, we have to see it. Very niche question. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I love know, that though. That, that's all we'll give that because no one knows love who we're talking it. about. Uh, David, all right. First up, we've got David. Uh, Alex, have you copped any shit from your old teammates or anyone for that stupid Squid Game comment that became an A League <laughs> Twitter post? Oh, yes. I missed this. <laughs> did you not see it? Ah, well, no. I, did, I did an interview about a month ago. And so the answer is yes. Towards the end of the interview, I threw in a statement that I joked about. And if you'd listened to the interview back, it was a very comical comment. And the way I said it was, you know, very jokingly. And it was taken massively out of context when it was written up and used as the front heading. Yep. Of That's one media, man. Do you know that? <laughs> article on Alex Grant scoring in the semi-final but yeah I, d- I just basically said something along the lines of um it's like the squid games when the Korean players play um you know like they leave it all on the line it's like a life or death situation ha 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 um you know very, very poignant ar- statement I yeah. feel very ironic but anyway they ran with it yeah I don't know why. um yeah. it was obviously topical because everyone's going on about it um, so they felt that that was necessary, but it made me out to be a bit of a dick, or look like a dick. The not comments, a people in the comments weren't happy, that's for sure, which is the, the ah, funniest bro, part. Look, there's so many keyboard warriors out there. That they, can say, they can say what they want, man. They'd never say it to my face, so there you go. No. Go on, All right, go on. next one. Anna Benjamin wants to know, how many players don't speak Korean, and what's it like communicating with the rest of the team, and where is the coach from? Um, as quick as you can okay the coach is Korean um, the foreigners don't speak Korean um, it's how many very, foreigners there are four foreigners it's very difficult and one of them barely speaks English so it is very difficult to communicate with the other Koreans we have got a translator at the club who helps out but even some things going through him gets lost in translation um, yeah so that's been a bit of an eye opener a bit of a challenging battle throughout the course of the year um, but you do that, you do your talking with the feet, you know, you know, the way you play <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the language we all speak yeah, in this. Man, it's, it's the world yeah. game for a reason, mate. That's it. Love it. All right. And uh, lastly, I had to do a double take when I read this name, but Jean Bon Jovi wants to know what the international travel has been like for the cup games and what's the COVID situation like. I mean, we've kind of touched on both, but yeah, tell us. Yeah, the, the travel has been shocking. Um, traveling to Thailand, um, masked up, gloved up, visored up, um, yeah. into the hotel, come back after spending three weeks in Bangkok in just a hotel room and a stadium, two weeks of quarantine at the clubhouse at, um, back in Korea in Pohang, which was tough being away from Lenny and Lauren. Then we went to Japan and did a week there and we came back and had to do another two weeks of quarantine. Um, it was nice to not have to do that playing the quarters and semis in in John Book and now here because we're double double vaxxed and the the uh, the rules have, have 
been um, relaxed a little. I don't think we have to do any quarantine when we arrive back to Korea, which is nice. Um, Mark McGowan, you're a lizard because I want to go back to <laughs> um, Perth at the end of the season and it's making it very challenging. Open up, you numpty. Um, <laughs> yep. dealing with a guy. I can't stand seeing his face every day on, on my Twitter feed, but there he is, smug as. Um, but, <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've got that off my chest. Yeah, um, yeah. let it all out, champ. But yeah, that's it. All right, that that's it, lads. We'll call it there. Granty, you got to run. Bryce's message is saying he's uh, having some technical difficulties, so we're going to call it call it there, people. If you're still listening, thank you very much. I hope that was insightful. And uh, who knows if Alex wins this tournament, and we're doing this another tournament, pod. We have to do another podcast. Yeah. Um. So stay tuned for what happens there. Maybe <laughs> even if he loses, but we'll we'll, we'll have to have another conversation. But for those that are keen, as I mentioned, ten play if you're in Australia. Um, if you're not, then I don't know where you can watch it. But Al Halal v Pohang Steelers in the AFC Champions League final on Wednesday, 24th of November, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're in Perth, midnight, so not too bad. But um, I'll be up. We'll be watching. And so will Bryce. Granty, best of luck, mate. Hope you have a. Might be watching. I hope not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and Alex might be watching as well. Well, let's hope you're not. But um, good luck to the team, mate. I um, yeah, I hope the senior players lead the group well, and you can pull off another upset, much like the Western Sydney Wanderers did in 2014. Backs against same the wall. Colors kind of, well. Same colours as well. Same colours, the, the red and black. So um, thanks. No, I appreciate. It. I've enjoyed this. It's been good. Yeah. Well, go well, Granty. Best of luck, mate. Go well. And um, as I said, thanks for listening. And you never know, we may be back. Here comes Alan Shearer. It's Shearer!